Welcome to another fine video in my Intro to HTML web video series. In this video, I want to talk about the messy issue of cross-browser compatibility. When you design a website, you intend it to look exactly the same on everybody's computer at all times. That's the goal. But not all browsers are created equal. Some behave differently than others. Let's take a look at how our web page looks in, uh, in Chrome, Firefox, Opera, and Explorer. This is what it looks like in Opera. I've got my header up here. My navigation is absolutely positioned to be right over my header. I've got my left and right columns. I've got my footer with an image in it and some links that are absolutely positioned to be right above my image in the footer. Looks pretty cool. Now let's take a look at how it looks in Chrome. Hey, what do you know? It looks exactly the same. That's really cool. Let's look at it in Firefox. Once again, exactly the same. Beautiful. We're on a roll here. Let's take a look at an Internet Explorer. This is going to be awesome. Oh, my web page is totally broken. Notice my links don't work. Things don't look quite the way they should. Well, how do we deal with this issue? Now, I'm not here to bash Explorer, but Explorer does come with some bugs that, um, I, I shouldn't even call them bugs. It does come with some quirks that the other browsers don't have. For example, versions of Internet Explorer older than Internet Explorer 9, which is their newest version right now, don't recognize any of the HTML5 elements that we've been working with so far. So nav, not recognized. Header, footer, not recognized. So any of this stuff that's dependent upon nav and footer when we do descendant selecting, it won't work. So we've got to do some things to make it work. So let's look at this. This is my code. We built this in another video. I've got a wrapper that wraps up all of my content. See there? Closes. Opens above the header. Closes below the footer. I've got a header with an H1 and an image in it. I've got my nav with a UL, a series of LIs, each of those LIs containing a link. This is pretty standard stuff. I've got my left column, which is called main. Main contains two articles, each article having an H2 and two paragraphs. See, another article here. Then I've got sidebar, which is a div called sidebar. It's got one article with an H2 and a paragraph. Then down below that I've got footer that has an image in it. It's got a UL and a series of LIs, each containing a link. Now, how do we get Explorer to recognize all the cool stuff that we've done? Well, what we can do is we can use some JavaScript. JavaScript is a scripting language for browsers. It's a, uh, it works in the browser environment, and it runs a bunch of special commands. There are all kinds of commands that we can do. The command that we're going to work with is going to look like this. Document dot create element. Did I spell that correctly? E-L-E-M-E-N-T. That's correct. This is the command that we're going to use. This here is called a function. This is our document object. Document means HTML document in this case. So it's talking about our HTML web page. Create element is something that's going to happen to our HTML web page. So we are going to create an element in the HTML web page. Remember, an HTML element is just one of those tags. It's a command given to the browser. So we can create elements like this by passing an argument. In this case, the argument is going to be nav. All right, so this, this line right here is going to create an element called nav in this specific HTML document. But this isn't all that we're going to do. 
Now, in order to get this to work, we need to do some special things. I've already got this created in another document, so I, I don't always like to reinvent the wheel. So I'm just going to copy it from here, paste it into our new document, and then I'll explain it. We are going to create our script. And um, make a whole bunch of programming statements in our script. But it's only going to run on one condition. This thing here is called a conditional comment. A conditional comment says, if something is true, then we're going to do something. If it's not true, it's totally ignored. In this case, this conditional comment says, if less than IE9. So what does that mean? If LT IE9. Well, it means if the browser that this web page runs in is less than Internet Explorer 9. So if it's an earlier version than Internet Explorer 9, we can run this script. If it's Internet Explorer 9 or later, it's not going to do any of this stuff. Okay, so it's not going to run scripts unnecessarily. It's only going to run the scripts if it needs to. So if the browser is less than IE9, it'll run this. So this is what the comment looks like. We start with our opening brace and then our closing brace, just regular tag. In the tag, we've got this exclamation mark and two dashes. That's what makes it a comment. This statement in here in between the square braces is our conditional. So if less than LT, capital I, capital E for Internet Explorer, 9. And then we're going to run our script. Our script starts with the script tag. It opens with the script tag and closes with the closing script tag. And then, like I showed you before, we've got our create element with the document. So create element, call that to document, and we're going to pass these arguments. We're going to pass arguments for header, nav. We're just going to do section which we haven't used yet, article, aside, which we haven't used yet, but we want to create it anyways, just because we might use it, footer, H group, which we haven't used yet, but we might use it at some point, so we'll create that element, figure, and fig caption. Okay, so that's going to create all those elements. Let's save this, and let's refresh it in Explorer and see if that helped. Okay, when I refresh, it gives me this little warning. To help protect your security, Internet Explorer has restricted this web page from running scripts or ActiveX controls. In order to run that script, we need to click here and allow blocked content. Click yes. And now the script worked. Internet Explorer now recognizes my nav and my footer, so my page behaves correctly. Now one last thing to ensure that everything works exactly the same in all browsers. We want to make sure that all of these new HTML elements are displayed block level. So I'm going to copy this, paste it over into my new document. I'm just going to put it down here at the bottom under browser fixes. And what I've done here is I've clumped together header, nav, section, article, aside, footer, H group, figure, and fig caption all in one declaration. You might notice that they're all on separate lines. You can put them all on the same line. That white space doesn't affect anything. But this just makes for one long selector. That's fine. We'll just keep it there. And then I've set display block to all of these elements. So now display block is applied to header, nav, section, article, aside, footer, age group, figure, and fig caption. This is just going to ensure that they all behave correctly. Save it, refresh it, you'll see no change. Looks good there. I'll refresh it here. Still looks exactly the same. So Firefox looks exactly like Explorer. Refresh it in Chrome. Is it going to look the same? It certainly does. Beautiful. Chrome looks exactly like Firefox, looks exactly like Explorer. Now let's look at Opera. Refresh Opera. Looks exactly the same. So that's cross-browser compatibility. Really the big thing that we're dealing with right now with cross-browser compatibility comes down to two things. First of all, the one thing we've talked about long ago 
the star selector the, um, that selects everything, the universal selector, padding margin zero, that sets everything to uh, a common uh, white space, and then this script, which will create elements in IE less than nine. So if you do these things, your web pages should look the same across all browsers. Thank you for watching.